This is a short video about section 3.3.2 in Stein's number theory book. This is about encoding a phrase in a number. Uh, we've been talking about one E word called encryption, and that's to make the secrets. Now we'll move on to the other important E word, encoding. So again, not the same thing as encrypting. So the main idea here is just like it says, what are some ways that I could take, you know, characters like letters and whatnot and change them into a number that I could encrypt later. Uh, the first way uh, that we'll look at is to take uh, num uh, a phrase S, say, and we'll try to encode that in base 27. So base 27 will be the first kind of system that I look at as far as encoding goes. And here's how it'll work. A single space is going to correspond to zero. The letter A will correspond to one because it's like the first better letter in the alphabet. B will correspond to two because it's the second letter and so on. Finally, capital Z goes to 26. So I'm only telling you about spaces and capital letters. So to give you an example about how do I take the phrase run Nikita, and so not including the quotation marks, just the phrase run Nikita there, how would I write that in, in or how do I encode that in base 27? Well, here is how, and I think of this here, here is my phrase run Nikita, and what I'm gonna think about is I'm gonna think about these letters here as like where they are, um, how many letters are there? So I would say this is in like the uh, zero slot, so this would be like 27 to the zero. That marker is way too thick. Let me fix that really quick. There we go, it's a little bit better, I think. So this A here, think about like how you write stuff in decimal, right? Like that is um, like the 10 to the zero spot, say. And so I'll think of this as the 27 to the zero spot. And I'll think of this T as the 27 to the one spot. And this I is in the 27 to the second spot. And so on down the line until uh, I think you get, this one is in the 27 to the ninth spot, right? Because there's that spacer that counts. Okay, so what do you do with those then? So now that you've got your placeholders, like, you know, what, what spot are these letters in? Now what we're gonna do is we'll take A and we'll put it spot 27 to the zero times, what's the value that we encode A as? And we coded A as one. And so when you see that, that is um, this guy right here, 27 to the zero times one. So the next one, T, T is in the 27 to the one spot, and T is the 20th letter in the alphabet. So I would encode it this way. That's this 27 times 20. And so I'm kind of working backwards here, and you keep doing that. And so your, your kind of last one, which I say last one, when you're reading like a normal person, it's left to right, so it kind of looks like your first one. Anyway, this 27 to the ninth, that's this R here, right? That's what spot it's in, and R is the 18th letter in the alphabet. So I hope that that makes sense where the powers of 27 are coming from. Uh, and also, where are these numbers coming from, like 18, 21, etc.? That's where we're encoding these things uh, this way. Okay, so what do you get when you do that? Just like in decimal form, right, where you have powers of 10 instead of 27, the point is you add all those up and you get your number. Well, if you add all those up in decimal form, you get this number here. So that's how, again, we encoded this phrase, in this case, run Nikita, being consistent with the book because the author th thought the show La Femme Nikita was pretty cool. So that's how we encode that phrase is this number here. What if you want to go backwards? What if you want to decode? So decode is kind of the opposite of encode. And to do that, well, if it's base 27, I'm just going to keep dividing this number by 27, and I'm going to keep track of the remainder when I do that. So when I take that number and divide it by 27 the first time, I'm just kind of running the division algorithm here. My remainder is 1. That's talking about this one right here. And I know that that 1 corresponds to the first letter in the alphabet A. I'm going to divide again, and that would look like this. So I divide everything by 27 again. My remainder is 20, and that's talking about this 20 right here, and that's T. So this is how I'm recovering my message. And so if you keep doing that, you just keep on dividing by 27, and again, you're always looking at this remainder. The remainder is what encodes um, where your letters were encoded. That's how you do things in base 27. Okay, so the next thing that we want to look at, we just got done with talking about base 27. Now what we're going to do is talk about the more widely used encoding system. And uh, what's more used to encode phrases as numbers is to use the ASC2 system. So in ASC2, each letter is going to correspond to an integer between 0 and 255 inclusives. So there's 256 different characters here. And really what these are supposed to also do for us, not only are we going to encode like capital letters, we're also going to talk about all your lowercase letters, but really almost any, any function on a modern keyboard. And so there is a 
ASC2, it's, there's a table that characterizes how everything on your keyboard gets encoded, again, as a number between 0 and 256. So to show you that, here is an ASC2 table character here. And so just to show you uh, what I'm looking at here, like over here, the letter capital A gets encoded as the decimal 65, say, and all sorts of stuff. Tons and tons, and then there's more down here, extended ASC codes, and you see that at last, the last one's 255 in the bottom right, and of course the first one up here starts at zero, so there's 256 total. But again, just how can you encode almost everything on a modern keyboard? So, and by the way, too, what is that called? ASC2 is the American Standard Code for Information Exchange, and so, um, you know, it is kind of the standard way to encode information. Base27 was fun, but this is what's more widely used. So fortunately for us, um, Sage has ASC2 commands built in, and it's ORD. So if I type in ORD um, A, I think it should be 65, and it is. So Sage knows this. Sage has ASC2 built in. Okay, cool. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to have Sage do all the work for us to the, do the encoding. So what we're going to do is define the following encoding function. So what we're going to do is we'll put this all into Sage together. But this much here is the encode function. Define this function, encode s, and what should s be? So whoever's playing with this, I'm going to say s should be a string. And so that's what this command does, str s. That makes whatever you plugged in a string. And what do I want this to do? Well, I want it to return the following. I want it to return the sum. So I'm going to add a bunch of stuff up. And here's what I'll do. I'm going to calculate the order of the ith character in my string. So i is going to be just like uh, the first letter in your string would be the zeroth character. So like i is going to start at zero, say, and go onward. And what we'll do is essentially this is going to work like base 256. It's not obvious how the letters are assigned, but the computations are base 256. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to multiply it by um, 256 to the i, like that's what slot it's in. And I'm going to do that uh, for i in range, however long my string is, so len s. So that's my encode function. So let's just make sure it works. Um, what if I wanted to do something like encode, let's say my name, say Andrew, and what would that look like? So my name gets encoded at list of numbers there. So that's the encode function. So what's the decode function look like? So let's define that. And so what should decode do? Just like in base 27, we just kept dividing by 27 and keeping track of the remainder. We're just going to keep dividing stuff by 256 and keeping track of the remainder too. So let's make Sage do all that hard work for us. So decode, decode is what I meant to say. It's going to work on an integer, so we'll call it n, say. And so let's say n, let's make sure whoever's typing, make sure they put an integer in. So integer n, that'll take their input or your input and make sure it's an integer. Next thing we'll do is we'll make like an empty list, we'll call it v. And now we'll write the following while loop. So we're going to have Sage keep doing the following computation. So while n is not equal to 0, uh, here's what I want to have happen. I want to append the following stuff to my empty list. And I want it to append what is the character that corresponds to n mod 256. In other words, find the remainder when you divide by 256 and tell me what character that is. So it's kind of like the inverse of the ORD function. It goes the other way. You give me the number, this should spit the character back out. So again, ASC, ASC2 is all built into Sage, and we're making use of that. Uh, and the next thing I want to do is I want to just consistently do that, right? So then what I'll do is I will just make my n smaller. I'll just make it, I'll, I'll take the floor of n, and I'll, I'll reset n to be this next value. And once I do that then, that's when it's done. So that loop's going to stop whenever you can't, whenever uh, your n becomes zero. That's when it'll stop. And at that point, you're going to have a lot of stuff in V. Like every time uh, you encounter, um, every time you pick a remainder and you spit out the character, that character gets attached to your list V. And now what I wanted to do is return this empty list here, but I'm going to just join, or empty string, sorry, and I'm just gonna join all the letters that are in my list V. So what this will do is it'll take all the stuff in the list V again, and it'll just combine it into a string. It'll string them all together. So that's the decode function.
So let's go back up and call, um, let's just call this M, just so we can call it later on. So M will be this number, this integer here. And I'll go ahead and run it. And uh, maybe if I want M to stay there, I'll put call, a semicolon, then M, and that'll return what M is. There we go. Now on the bottom, let's just test out the decode function. So when I decode M, I expect it to give Andrew back, and it does. So that is how the encode function and the decode function work in Sage, where again, Sage is automatically using ASC2.